Hello, hello. Who's here? Can you um, let me know in the comments who's already here? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, we're just gonna wait a little bit, a few more minutes, see if some more people join us. I see MicroPixie is here. Turn this light down a little bit. Hi, Mario. Hi, Jennifer. Glad you guys can make it. Good to see you guys. <laughs> Hopefully this will help everybody out. Hi, Alyssa. Thanks for coming. Just wait a few more minutes, see who else shows up. Thanks, Jennifer. Appreciate that. Just trying to help everybody out, you know, during these times. Oh, hey, Susan. <laughs> Good to see you on here. This is new for me doing a live stream on YouTube, so uh, hopefully you guys will be able to hear. Can everybody hear me okay? Give it a couple more minutes. Okay, good. Great. I'm gonna tilt this light up a little bit. Okay, it's interesting, the computer cameras are kind of uh, funky. I noticed that it changes, for those of you who are film people, it changes the color balance quite a bit. So I have a couple of different lights going on here. Um, I have tungsten lights and I have daylight combination going on here. And I'll explain what that is. Oh, redshirt, my computer is slow while you're streaming, not an issue on my cell. Oh, okay, good, glad you're watching on your cell phone, thanks. <laughs> Good to have you here. We'll give it another minute, see who else joins us. I know we had about um, almost 30 people interested. Maybe some will join us when we, uh, you know, keep going. Hey, Bonnie. <laughs> Good to have you here. How many people um, know a little bit about lighting? I know some of the people on here that I see, uh, people I've worked with in the past. Hi, Suzanne, thanks for coming. Okay, so let's see. Hi, Soji. Thanks for coming. Okay, so it's 2.45, I'm gonna start. Um, so thank you all for coming. This is basic lighting for live video um, and you know video conferencing or your live stream feeds. Um, so what I'll just tell you a little bit about me. My name is Beth Cloutier. I am a uh, producer, director, and director of photography, and I have been working in the industry for a little over 17 years. <laughs> So I've been doing it for a little while. Uh, I've worked on a lot of TV series, uh, documentaries, some films, uh, web series, things that I've aired on the Food Network, on um, the Food Network as well as CNN, PBS, uh, Discovery Channel, Sundance. So I've done I've done a little bit, uh, but today I felt like you know, considering the climate that we're all in. Uh, staying at home, a lot of us are video conferencing, 
it's really important that we're able to see ourselves clearly and that the people on the other end are seeing us clearly. And I've had several experiences where I've been video conferencing with people and they have sat in front of a window. So the window was behind them and I couldn't see their face. Their face was all black. So I felt like, hmm, maybe I should help some of these people out. And the other reason why I'm doing this is because I work with a lot of musicians and I've been watching a lot of live feeds from musicians. And I feel like this may help them uh, light themselves a little bit better, at least put yourself in a place using the available lights that you have and the, the things that you have uh, so that we can see you a little bit better. I know there's other people who are doing videos on audio, so you should check those out when you get a, when you get a chance. Um, so I have, uh, I sent most people on the email list, a list of items that I am going to be using. And some of these items I have here on the table uh, one of them is a piece of tin foil. <laughs> oh, I just noticed the color change. So there's two sides to the tin foil. There's a shiny side to the tin foil, and there's a dull side to the tin foil. I think you can see it here, but if you have some tin foil at home, uh, you can check out there's two sides to the tin foil. And we'll be using both of these sides to show you the different ways that you can light the tin foil. Um, some other things you might need are some tacks. Tacks. I have them in a plastic bag. Usually they should be in a container, but this is what I have. Um, if you guys have clamps, these are really useful. So I have some clamps. If you don't have clamps, uh, we have clothespins. And these we can use to hold a lot of things and prop things up. Uh, some other things that I have here. Okay, so I have this plastic, white plastic bag. Um, and I put it around a picture frame. So this is something that I use as a bounce to, light, to bounce light off of and to uh, help light the face a little bit more. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Another item that I have is a big piece of cardboard. You can use this and I'll show you what we can do with that. If you have, um, some people may have LED string lights. These are really great for lighting as well. Um, and then, uh, so to use, so a lot of the time when we're lighting, we need to put these bounces that we call them, or, what I have here is tin foil wrapped around a piece of cardboard. And so I have the dull side on one side and the shiny side on the other side. And you can kind of see what it does to me. I have a light over here to my right, which might be your left. And I have another light over here. And I will show you how we can use these bounces together. Um, Another item you may have is a white sheet and a dark colored sheet. This is actually a piece of duvetine, which we use in the industry. It's a opaque black cloth that we use to block light. But you can use a curtain, a dark curtain, or a dark opaque sheet as well. So let's get started. I am going to have my husband, his name is Scott, and he is going to sit in this chair and I am going to do a few different lighting scenarios for you guys uh, with Scott. Okay, so we're going to trade, we're going to trade places. Okay. So I'm going to have you scoot a little that way. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Okay, so what I have here is um, Scott is basically lit from the front with a front light. So I have a light right over the computer screen, right at the top, right around the center of the area. And 
you can take a lamp, you can take like a table lamp and stack it up on some books and kind of angle it down so that the light is kind of coming at you at this degree of an angle. So something probably like this degree of an angle coming down from the top of your computer screen. And this will light all of the face, which is really important when you're using video conferencing or doing live stream. We need to see a front light so that we can see you clearly. Um, otherwise, what happens is, I'm gonna turn this light off and show you. And let me get this light off too. So it's a little bit darker and it's a little bit grainier. I do have a light in the background here, um, which I'll explain what that is in a little bit. But if we want Scott to really pop a little bit more, so you can see he's starting to get some raccoon eyes because the light isn't very in front. So we'll turn this light on, turn it up a little bit. And now, so now we're filling in his eyes here and it gives a nice clean look. You can also see it on my face too. Um, so, Another thing that we want to do is work. I'm just going to have you scoot up just a little bit more because I want to get you right here. Okay, good. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is side light. Uh, side light is like, it's what it is. It comes from this side here and this side here. So it adds an extra little bit of fill to the face and the body. So I'm going to turn this light out and I'm gonna turn these back lights out and show you how that affects his face. And let's turn these out. Okay, so now we have a pretty dark shadow in the background here. We still have our front light. Now I'm gonna turn off the front light and then I'm just gonna turn on the side light so you can see what happens to his face. Okay, so you can see here it's grainier and now we're getting a little bit of light coming from our window, which is over to the left. This is giving him a little bit of side light from the window. I'm gonna turn this light on, which is just a standard table light. It looks like this and we actually don't have a, uh, a lampshade for it. Okay. And now you see how that adds some nice fill right in here. Now it's still feeling kind of grainy in the image, so we wanna bring the light level up a little bit more. So I'm gonna turn on the front light. Okay, now it's becoming a little less grainy. I'm gonna dim it down just a little bit because it looks a little washed out. We actually have a dimmer on this front light and I'll show you which light this is. Um, and let's turn that out. So I'm turning out, we had an overhead light on as well, turning that light out. So now you can see the side light and the front light are really kind of filling in this area of Scott's face and the front area of his face. Can you tilt up a little bit, tilt your head up? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so thanks. Sure. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is show you about a uh, backlight and the hair light. And these are just kind of some nice little tricks that add a little pizzazz to your image. Um, so I have this LED strip light right here. And you don't actually have to use an LED strip light if you don't have one. You can use a lamp. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to create some nice like rim backlight area or a hair light um, from the top and then from the bottom. So, the first one is gonna be from the top with the LED strip light. Uh, this strip light is, uh, let's see if I can lower this to show you. I have this on a music stand. So if there's any musicians here, you can use music stands to hang your lights. So this is actually a music stand. The microphone goes right here. So, you know, I lift this up. Typically, you don't want this stuff to be seen in your image, but I'm showing, I'm leaving it in the image so that all of you can see what I'm doing here. Um, now I'm going to turn this on. Wait. 
Okay, and now you can see that it added a little bit of light just right along the edge of his hair here, and along the edge here. Now, this is adding a little bit of light along the edge of his clothing here. But typically I would just, you know, take this out or you could leave it, you know, it's up to you. It's a little bit distracting to leave in the image. So a lot of the time you don't want to leave this stuff in your image. But for the fact of showing you what we're doing, I'll just leave it in. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do backlight from below using a regular lamp. And then for those of you who have LED uh, lamps, uh, I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so I'm turning this off. And so we have two lamps here that we're going to use. This one is an LED lamp that I use in my uh, video shoots. And it has a dimmer. It's pretty bright. So I'm going to put that on the floor on a stack of books behind Scott. And it's going to create some bright light around his hair here. Okay, so now we see a little bit of that light there, right along the edge of his hair. It's really subtle, although you're seeing it more on me, but normally I wouldn't be standing here. Um, so another thing that you can do is you can use a lamp. I'm going to turn this light off. And I have this old... 1940s, 1950s lamp that my grandmother gave me as a uh, gift. And it has a, I think it's about a 50 watt bulb in it. So I'll turn it on and we'll see if we can light him from behind with this lamp. It's also a CFL bulb. So these CFL bulbs take a little bit, take a little bit of time to become brighter. So when you first turn it on, it might not be as bright. But in about five minutes, it'll it'll be much brighter. Okay. Yeah, that's not very bright. But so there's a little bit of a light here. You probably probably can't see it very well on the screen. I'm seeing, but a um, little bit of a light there. Okay. So normally we would be closer to the computer screen and we would light this all around us around the computer. Um, I'm just for demonstration, I'm backing off so that you can see everything that I'm doing. One of the other things that I wanna show you is how to bounce light to use as a fill on the face. So that's what we're gonna use our cardboard and our tinfoil for. Also, if you have a stand or a music stand, we're gonna prop it up on this music stand. Okay, so Scott, I'm gonna have you just come a little bit more forward. Okay, let's see what some people are reading here. Okay, let's see. So now we have a light from the front coming here. We have a light off to the right, might be your left. We have our backlight. And then we're gonna use this tin foil to add a little light to Scott's face. So you can probably see that when I move this tin foil around, I'm either getting a shadow or I'm getting a little bit of a highlight on his face. Like right here, you can see some of the highlight coming right there. I'm gonna back off a little bit. And then we get just a little bit of that highlight. You can go in this direction as well. And you can get just a little bit of a highlight there. I'm going to have you move a little bit more forward. Okay, so once we figure out where we want this to be, so we got some light right there. So we hold it here. We lean it up and I'm gonna use this clothespin, which is stuck on here, on the music stand. I'm gonna use that to prop it up. Household items. 
Look at that. There's a nice extra little bit of light right around here, around his face. So now we have some, now we have some nice fill on his face. He looks pretty good. So you can create this basic lighting setup using cardboard and tin foil. You can um, use this. If you don't have tin foil, because I know some people are running out of things, you can also use a white plastic trash bag on this poster, or you can put it on cardboard, and you can also use that as a bounce. So let's try that. It's going to probably be pretty subtle for you guys to see. Okay. Yeah, so get a little bit of your shadow on here. Yeah, okay. Nice. So I'm propping the white plastic bag up, and we're getting just a little bit of an extra fill on this face there. It's very subtle, though. So I'm going to take this away. And now, for anybody who is a musician, I'm going to have uh, Scott get his bass and have him stand, and we're going to do a lighting situation where you're standing. Okay, so I'm going to have you grab your bass. And let's move this chair out of the way. So I'm going to have you stand right back there. Okay. So Scott, so this is for some musicians out there. So we're going to tilt this up. And I have my front light coming on Scott, my uh, lamp light over on this side over here. And I think I want a little bit more light on Scott. So what I'm going to do, if you have a light that is about a 100 watt bulb, you can take it and bounce it into the wall. So I'm going to show you, and that will actually take the light and it'll bounce it back towards the person. It's a really great way to get just an overall ambience kind of fill light. So, so I don't have a um, one of those floor lamps with the multi lamps on them. Sometimes they make them with three different lamps. You could probably use one of those if you have one of those lamps. Um, or you could have like a couple of different lamps together and just kind of bounce them into the wall. So what I have here is a 120 watt LOL DP light, LOL Pro light. And I'm just going to bounce this into the wall, uh, the white wall, and this is going to bring a little bit more of uh, fill light onto Scott, just create a bit of, bit of nicer ambience of light. So let's try this. Okay, I'm going to move it off the camera so you can't see it. Okay. So if I go up towards the ceiling, I get it bouncing more off the ceiling and it comes down and it angles towards Scott. So we've got, so this is without, and it looks like the computer is doing a little bit of adjustment. But, and this is with, and you give it a second, it'll adjust for it. So now we've got Scott a little bit more full, and we don't have, we don't have terrible shadows behind him. As you can see on the wall, the shadows are pretty, pretty good. So that's normally for like a nice kind of overall bright ambient lighting, basic lighting, you want to do something like this. Um, let me see if anybody's had any questions. Are you using a camera hooked up to your computer, or is this the camera built into the computer from Bonnie? Um, Bonnie, I am using the, cam the, com the camera that's hooked up into my iMac. Um, so guys, that is uh, basic lighting. Um, a couple things you probably should know about the lighting. Okay, thanks, babe. 
Say bye. Bye, for <laughs> Um. So there's two types of lighting. One is daylight, which is the light that you see outside. And there are also daylight bulbs that you can use, which are more of a white, bluish light. And then there is a type of light called tungsten light, which is normally what you see in your everyday household lamps. So those are two different types of light. A lot of the time I like to light with both of those kinds of light. I think it looks prettier, uh, but it's up to you. If you want all, um, you know, household bulb light look, the warm tungsten light look, uh, you can do all of that. If you want all daylight look or you want to just use your window light, you can also do that. Um, it gives you different kind of color temperature and light. I get my glasses. You want your glasses? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, Thank you. So I think that covers just like basic lighting for um, for live streaming and for um, video conferencing. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please type them and I will try to answer them as best as I can. Um, just looking at see who's written here. The lamp bulb, is it a soft bulb or a regular through for, I think you meant 3,400 Kelvin bulb, right? Reggie director. Uh, the bulb is, the overall bulbs in the lamps are soft bulbs, except for the bulb that I have to my uh, right. And that bulb is about a 50 watt uh, tungsten bulb lamp bulb. Um, I'm supposed to take my camera to my computer to view via YouTube. Anyway, I love your demonstration. It's a great refresh for me. Okay, thanks, Reggie. <laughs> um, lights you have on in your room. Uh, Bonnie, I was showing the lights, but maybe you missed it. I'll turn this light off. I'll show you one of my lamp lights I'm using is just a lamp from a, a light from Ikea without a lampshade on it. Um, it gives a little bit of a harsher light, but you know, for these computer cameras, I feel like you kind of need all the light that you can get. Um, and when I turn it on, you know, let me turn this down a little bit. Okay. I was supposed to have my camera to my computer via YouTube anyway. Okay. Looks like the camera is reacting to changes overall value. I forgot what you call those. So what you wear gives you more or less contrast. That's true. Um, my face right now is looking quite washed out. Let me turn this off. Um, so I just turned off my front light because it seems like the camera on the computer is reacting to the overall light that we have on right now. I still have my 120 white bulb bouncing into the white wall and it's, it's bouncing onto my face and that's where that light is coming from. I also have my light bulb from Ikea, my lamp from Ikea over here, and that is filling in this side of my face right here. Um, the light that's bouncing into the wall is also filling in pretty much the whole room. Um, so that, I think that answered Susan. Yeah, but what you wear, okay, so if you wear high contrast clothes, like I have pale skin and I'm wearing these dark clothes, the computer camera does have a hard time uh, registering that so it might be actually I should have thought of that before I did this I might be a better idea to wear you know the same tonal value of clothing and color uh, that might help the computer camera to be able to read and register your face a little bit more um, does it make sense to invest in an 18 inch diva light or will the lighting you're explaining have the same effect I mean, for doing uh, lighting for video conferencing and live streaming, I mean, of course, it's always nice to have a diva light. Um, I think it definitely is a good investment, especially if you're going to be doing this all the time professionally uh, or doing live streaming all the time. I think that's a great idea. A diva light is a light that is about uh, 
two feet tall by four feet or two feet wide. And it has four bulbs inside and it has a dimmer on it. And you can trade out the bulbs for daylight or tungsten bulbs. And it just gives you a larger area to cover on your body um, for lighting. Let me see. Uh, let's see. YouTube, 18 Diva. What color backgrounds, walls are best for video conferencing or does it really matter? I think it does matter. I don't think you want too high a contrast uh, for your background versus your foreground. Um, neutral colors seem to always work well, or uh, like I have a red background, but it's almost in the same, it's a little bit probably the same tonal value as my hair. I'm really pale, so uh, you know, my skin clearly is popping out. Um, I think the background does make a difference. Um, it you know, what you wear also makes a difference uh, in these video conferencing. I think wearing more solid colors and patterns that have a larger pattern to them uh, will read a little bit better on screen. You won't get this thing called moraine, which is like a pixelating pattern that happens on video cameras. Um, uh, what color walls, what color background walls are best for video or does it really matter? How do you deal with light changes from windows? Ah, uh, that's a good question. How do you deal with light changes from windows? Windows present quite a problem with lighting. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm lighting, uh, and I know I'm going to be using natural light from a window, I try to find a window that is north facing. If you're in a win if you're in a situation where you're using um, east, south, or west facing windows, you're going to have dramatic lighting shifts and lighting changes. And so if you can find a place in your house with a window that's north facing, um, you will not, it will be more of like an ambient daylight coming through the window and you won't have to deal with so many shifts. The only thing you'll have to deal with is if you're filming and you're looking out the window, which, you know, for these types of things, I don't recommend, um, you're going to see shadows changing across uh, your screen, but that's over a long period of time. Um, so if you can find north face windows, uh, those are really the best to uh, work with because of the ambient light that they give. Um, let's see. Thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> can you mention the placement of the computer camera? Is it above your eye level? So it's that it's above your eye level. So it's flattering. Yeah, the computer camera is, it's kind of like right above here. So if I look directly at the camera, I'm looking directly at you. I'm kind of looking at myself as I'm doing this with you guys because um, I have this green light staring right at me. It's kind of annoys my eyes. So, <laughs> um, but if you do have your computer camera, it's probably good to have it a little bit above. And that way you don't get these, you know, if any of us have these kind of like, you know, chin things going on or we don't want to show our chin or our neck, it actually creates like a, angle and a shadow so that it is not distracting uh, for people when they're looking at you. Uh, that's the other reason why I like to have a light above the camera slightly is for two reasons. One is that it creates a nice shadow under the chin, um, but you still get fill on the eyes so you don't get raccoon eyes. And um, also when you're looking into the camera, um, it won't bother your eyes. Because uh, a lot of the time what happens is if people put the light right at their eye level, it can really bother your eyes to look right there at the lights. Um, so that's uh, what I recommend for that. Um, okay, what is a diva light? Single beige female. I will uh, explain that to you in the uh, description. I'll put a link to a, a diva light. They're really cool. I like them a lot. What about glare from glasses? Yeah, glare from glasses. That's definitely um, something we all deal with. So one of the ways to deal with uh, lighting with glasses is again, if you can put your light above and then have your glasses, so you want the light to be above so that if it's eye level, it's gonna come right into your glass. It's gonna reflect right off the glasses. There's nothing you can do about the computer screen reflecting off your glasses. It's just going to be there. 
um, unless you have the kind of glasses that have this reflection coating on it. It's called an anti-reflection coating, I believe. Um, I have it on mine, but I still see a little bit of reflection on my glasses from the computer talking to you guys. So um, hopefully that answers that question, Eli. And where are you looking for? Where are you looking for eyeline? Are computer cameras balanced for tungsten and daylight? Yeah, that's a good question, Bonnie. Um, are computers balanced for tungsten and daylight? I think that they try to, uh, from what I'm noticing, is that they adjust constantly to the lighting changes to create the overall natural skin tone. I think the computer technology is looking for a natural skin tone. So I'm gonna turn this tungsten light off to my right and let's see what happens. So it looks like it adjusted and I have another tungsten light off here, but it's really blowing my face out. So that, I'm gonna turn this light back on and try and balance my face out a little bit more. And it's readjusting. And it looks like it takes a few minutes. That's, that's the struggle with computers, um, with the computer camera, is it doesn't always, I think, have the greatest ability to balance light, but it, it looks like it's balancing light for skin tone. Skin tone meaning whatever your skin tone is, it's not purple, it's not orange, it's not blue. It's trying to find like, a, for at least a white person like myself, it's trying to find like the natural white skin tone. I think for an African American or a brown person, it'll try and find your brown skin tone color. Um, okay, let's see. Would you say it's better to wear a color that is closer to your skin tone? Not necessarily. I think it's okay to wear a color that's different from your skin tone. I think you would blend too much if you did that. So there is not so much contrast. Yeah, I mean, you can wear different colors. I think, you know, if you look at a color grayscale and, um, from zero to 10 and you kind of, if you have the ability to judge what that uh, color might be in that grayscale, you can figure out what might look good on camera for you. Um, any phone lighting apps you recommend? Hmm, no, I don't know. <laughs> I know uh, lens apps I could recommend, but not phone lighting apps. Sorry, Elisa. Seems like people with laptops on a desk need to prop them up to get proper headroom. Yes, thanks, Bonnie, for bringing that up. Uh, headroom is a really big deal when you're doing video conferencing. Uh, so headroom meaning the space between the top of your head to the edge of the camera here. So this is the top of the camera, and this is the top of my head. You generally want to have like what we would consider if you hold your hand out an inch above. Well, sorry, my husband's on the phone if you guys hear him. Um, so that's headroom. You want to try and keep a little bit of room above the head. You don't want to go like this and cut your head off. That doesn't look good. You don't want to go way down here because now you have all this space. So something around here is really the proper headroom. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so I think uh, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments of the video once I post it on YouTube. And um, also if uh, anyone feels like leaving a tip, <laughs> I would totally appreciate it, but there's no pressure to do it because I know everyone's situation today. Um, I have a Venmo listed, listed in the description below, and I also have a PayPal, but this is a free class and you are not obligated to do that. I want everyone to feel comfortable about it, and um, hopefully this was uh, helpful for you guys. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I am going to sign off. And like I said, if you have any uh, questions about anything, please leave them in the comments and I will try to address them there. Okay, thanks, have a good day and everyone stay healthy and safe.